27 May 1942. The carrier USS Yorktown returns to Pearl Harbor for urgent repairs of damages sustained at the Battle of the Coral Sea. That same day, a Japanese armada under command of Admiral Yamamoto steams eastward across the Pacific. A month has passed since the Doolittle Raid. Still smarting from this bold attack on Japanese cities, Yamamoto accelerates his plan to hit the Americans hard and force them out of the Pacific War. His strategy calls for drawing the American carriers away from Pearl Harbor and into a trap. At Pearl Harbor, Admiral Nimitz knows that the enemy will strike again, and soon. I was working in Pearl Harbor as an analyst, as an intelligence analyst with the Combat Intelligence Unit, CIU, which also was known colloquially as Station Hypo. The commander of Station Hypo was Joseph Rochefort. Lieutenant Tom Dyer was the head cryptographer Admiral Nimitz needs to decipher Japanese coded transmissions that may alert him to the Imperial Japanese Navy's next target. The main uh, operational code used by the Japanese Navy was JN-25. For months, Commander Rochford's hypo team has worked night and day deciphering bits and pieces of the JN-25 code. By mid-May 1942, they see clues, both in patterns and frequency of transmission. We found that the target that the Japanese were, were going for in this operation was AF. We knew that Pearl Harbor, or Oahu, was AH. So we knew AF would be nearby. We fairly soon came to the conclusion that AF was midway, and Admiral Nimitz agreed. But skeptics in Washington, including Nimitz's superior, Admiral Ernest King, need more proof from Rochford and his codebreakers before ships will be deployed to defend the American base at Midway. To confirm the identity of AF, Hypo suggests to Midway that they send a radio message in plain English, saying their freshwater distilling plant has broken down. Two days later, Hypo intercepts a Japanese message reporting that AF was short on water. That cinched it. From then on, Admiral Nimitz made his plans to defend Midway against this large Japanese force that we knew was coming. The Japanese combined fleet bound for Midway includes a strike force of four carriers under Admiral Nagumo, a main force under Admiral Yamamoto aboard the battleship Yamato, and the separate invasion forces. Admiral Nimitz developed a defense plan in which he sent three aircraft carriers to a point northeast of Midway, which was designated Point Luck. From Point Luck, task forces 16 and 17 will wait until Nagumo shows his hand, then surprise the unsuspecting enemy armada. The battle starts at 0430 when the Japanese launch a strike of 108 aircraft against the island of Midway. At about 5.30 a.m., an American PBY sights the Japanese armada. The American aircraft on Midway are launched immediately. At 6.25 a.m., the Japanese bomb Midway Island, but its defenders put up a stiff fight. 7.10 a.m. Midway's planes roll in against the Japanese carriers. They are very roughly handled by the Japanese Combat Air Patrol Zeros. They inflict no damage whatsoever. Minutes later, the Japanese Air Group commander over Midway sends Admiral Nagumo an urgent signal saying the U.S. flag still flies. A second strike is required. But Nagumo's planes are armed with anti-ship bombs, not land attack weapons. Nagumo is in a bit of a sticky situation. He has orders from his superior, Admiral Yamamoto, to hold half of his aircraft in reserve uh, for any unforeseen contingencies if there are American ships out there. At the same time, he's got his group commander saying, we need to hit Midway again. At 7.15 a.m., Nagumo gives the order to go ahead and rearm all reserve aircraft on his carriers with land attack weapons for another assault on Midway. At about 7.45 a.m., one of the Japanese scout planes suddenly reports seeing American ships. The Midway Strike Force could be in trouble if Nagumo does not act quickly. He immediately tells his, his ordnance crews, stop what you're doing, put the torpedoes back on the planes, we've got to get ready for an anti-ship strike. 
9.30 a.m., torpedo bombers from the three American carriers attack the Japanese carriers. Defending fighters and anti-aircraft again make short work of the attackers, but the courage of the Americans has thrown the Japanese off balance. 10 a.m., the Japanese carrier task force has now been sighted by not one, but two separate groups of American dive bombers from the carriers Enterprise and Yorktown. Between the hours of 10.22 and 10.27, 10.28, five, six minutes, the Americans attack with their dive bombers and they attack three separate Japanese carriers. Planes from Enterprise fatally damage the carriers Kaga and Akaji, while planes from Yorktown wreck the carrier Soryu. The fourth Japanese carrier, Hiryu, escapes. Later that afternoon, Hiryu launches a successful counterattack, severely damaging the Yorktown. But by 5 p.m., planes from Enterprise and Yorktown find Hiryu and commence their attack. She is uh, caught in the late afternoon and uh, suffers four large bomb hits forward and is left burning. 9 p.m., 4 June, Hiryu is trying to limp out of the battle area, but her fires are out of control. Kaga and Soryu have both gone down. Akaji is still afloat, but is a burned out shell. Admiral Yamamoto that night made the decision to order retreat. He will personally take responsibility for this catastrophe uh, in front of the emperor. The war is not over yet. We know that there's a lot of hard fighting left to come, but it's clear that we have the, the moral ability, the technical ability, the tactical ability to take these guys on and win. There was no celebrating as such in Hypo. We were all very pleased, obviously, that things had gone as we had predicted they would. Uh, we were correct, even though others were wrong. Uh, but there was no champagne being poured or, or toasting to, to our victory at that point. We went ahead with our daily work because we still had a war ahead of us.